You're listening to To Hatchapod with Key Budge, Corey Costello, and Greg Garrett. To Hatchapod time again. Key Budge, Greg Garrett today. Greg, how are you? Doing fantastic, Key. We are recording this right after the 4th of July. We had a little bit of a celebration here in town. We had a lot going on, starting off with the T- uh, Tatchaville Recreation Parks District. Can hardly say that. I'm, I'm super tired this morning, sorry. And the run, and then the pancake breakfast, Ed Grimes Memorial Pancake Breakfast, all the events at the park, and then the bull riding, and the fireworks spectacular last night. And it was spectacular. I'm reading across social media how much fun everyone had. And that's one of the our signature events that we have all year. So I know how tired Corey is. Corey's not here because he worked all day starting, what did you say, at 4 a.m.? I think he was up and about at 4 a.m. And leading up to the 4th of July activities also, he it was a heavy lift. It's always a heavy lift because the city is paying for and, and, and doing a lot of the events, not to mention you know, all the volunteers at TMRA and, and different organizations doing their things too. So. And he was the point of contact all day for all of those things. Right. So. Today, what we wanted to do was talk about one of the special things that we did at Central Park is we had our Maker's Market. Gail Caldwell from TVAA is here today. Gail, welcome to Tehachapod. Thank you. It's nice to have you here. And what we want to know is we want to find out more about TVAA. We want to find out more about specific events that you put together and how people can get involved. So we've got lots of things that we want to talk about today. But first of all, Congratulations on the Central Park portion of the having the Maker's Market out there and the amount of people that came to attend. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we had a really great group of vendors. Everybody was willing to work together really well. Um, we had vendors helping each other out when a tent collapsed. So mm-hmm. it was a really good event. And this is the best group of vendors we've had. It was a little windy yesterday, but that's that's a moneymaker into Hatchapi. It was a nice, cool breeze. My wife and I walk through the the vendors, and I'm amazed always at the the quality. And I, I want to say arts and crafts, but it's changed. The, the name has changed. I think we want to talk about that in a minute too. But but the quality of the product that's brought to the park. Yeah, definitely. People are are really honing their crafts. They're getting new ideas. They're bringing new products to the markets, and it's just wonderful. So that was something. Just before we started recording, I asked you. I said, "I go." Originally, I remember it being a craft fair. Mm -hmm. And then you said, we did that, and then it moved to... The Artisan Festivals. But people couldn't pronounce it correctly. Yes, everybody kept calling it an Artesian Festival. So we're having an Artesian Festival. (laughs) Yes, we decided we needed another name change, and so we just kind of went with a the new social media buzzword for craft fairs is maker's market maker's market okay and you mentioned the hashtag that i mean we talk about social media we talk about connecting to people so people follow different things so you can put in the hashtag and whatever it is afterwards and you saw that hashtag maker's market yes was one of the hot buzz in this world of of crafted items that are for sale that people are drawn to yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we go from just through life, we go through different cool words. So this just happens to be the one for a craft fair now. Love I that. like it, actually. I it, think it's a cool, I think it is a cool name. You're right. Well, it, because everything is made. You know, they, like you said, these artists come together, these craftsmen come together and, and they put their, their, their heart, their sweat, tears into their projects that they bring forward to the public. I think that's just a perfect name. And no disrespect to past um, artisans. You had to be really into that to be able to align yourself. But again, nowadays, it's product that is quite amazing. The quality, it, just, it blows my mind at the quality that they're producing these days. With that, that ties back to the Tehachapi Valley Arts Association and TVAA, which is, and I can't forget Gallery in Gifts, you know, at the corner of Green and Tehachapi Gallery Boulevard. Gallery in Yes, no, the and. Right, the letter N uh-huh. in between. <laughs> yeah. And it, right there at the corner of Tehachapi Boulevard and Green Street, you've got a great brick and mortar where different artists are involved in it. Let's talk a little bit about that. Let's talk about the brick and mortar that's there open every day. Well, Gallery and Gifts started in September of 1979 by a, a group of 12 Tehachapi Valley Art Association members who decided that we needed a permanent place to display our wares and 
raise money. Of course, all of the proceeds from everything that we do go to buying art supplies for local area schools. So the the classrooms and the teachers, you know, the kiddos really appreciate getting all that fun art stuff to do. And we also give uh, money for scholarships. I was going to mention scholarships. I knew Mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we were talking earlier again, Key, about uh, when TVAA was formed right after World War II, people coming home from the war started making things kind of the maker's market at the time. So that was going way back. So the history is very, the roots are very deep into Hatchaby. Yeah. And then it was official, TVAA was officially formed in 1963. Mm -hmm. So it's been around a really long time. Right. Wow. Well, let's continue the gallery and gifts. How many artists make up or are represented within the store itself? We currently have 33 members. Every single member takes turns working the store. We pay rent, we pay commission on our sales, and that's how we keep the store going. 33, that's, and you get a chance, so you really get a chance to meet the artists. Oh, absolutely. When you go in, I mean, here are, you mean, whether you're buying their product, their item that they've crafted, but you're getting a chance to talk with someone who works with their hands, that understands the amount of effort and time that goes into each of these uh, beautiful items that's uh, for sale. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we that's what we like to do. It's kind of, it's kind of like a co-op. So you, you've got to be a member. Yes. You've got to work the store and you can sell your product. So it really is win-win for everybody. Yes, absolutely. Okay. And keep the overhead low. Definitely. Yeah. That's I mean, where, to be. where else can a maker have their stuff on display all year long and only have to put in two days a month at the shop? And it's a prime corner right across from the depot, the BK Theater, right on Green Street. It's a beautiful corner. Yep, it's perfect absolutely place the to perfect be. place. I well, bet you get a lot of walk-ins. Yeah. And, and everybody that's from out of town, they all come in and, you know, we give them the lowdown on everything that's going on in town, the best places to eat. And oh, nice. What's happening on the okay. weekend. And so you're another visitor center. There you yes. go. <laughs> well, let's talk about the variety that's there because you can get anything from a sculpture to there's metal works, there's beautiful photography, there's hand painted arts that go on. Just everything. Look. There's, there's uh, wood carving, there's cutting boards, candles. Bath and body products, fashion accessories, jewelry, really beautiful jewelry. Uh, we sculptures. Have sculptures and watercolor and oil paintings. and Paintings that are turned into postcards. I bought postcards there uh, many times and yeah. send them out in the holidays. Uh, we have stained glass. We have felted art. Just everything that you can imagine. And it's probably lots ever of changing too with the seasons. Yes. I bet it changes also. Mm-hmm. And it's always going to be something unique, one of a kind. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not. You're not going to find it. You know, at a big box store or anything like that. No, for sure. And so you mentioned you have 33 members. What does it take to become a member? If you were an artist moving to town or you wanted to showcase your product, let's say, what's it take to become a member? Uh, Just come in the store, pick up an application, talk to one of the clerks at the counter. You bring samples of your work to one of our board meetings. Uh, We meet on the second Monday of the month. And then we, you know, we talk to you. We find out what you do, how long you've been doing it, and you're... Product goes up for a vote with the membership. It's pretty easy, actually. Yeah, it's very easy. And then on the first Friday, you guys also do something special, and that has a long history as well. Yeah, every first Friday, we feature a new artist in our art gallery, and then we have a a reception from 4 to 7, refreshment served, and you get to meet the artist and have a look at their work. And that's something that I've, I've been in a few times to see that, and getting a chance to meet that artist as they're proudly displaying their gallery of, of hard work. It's neat to see that connection and you get a chance to ask and kind of pick their brain. What was your inspiration for this or whatever it is? There's always a story to go with those each piece of art, which I find, you know, very, you know, inspiring when you talk to an artist, they can really get into painting a picture of their picture. What's that like getting a chance to work with the, the variety of artists and then highlighting some of them, Oh, it's always fun. I mean, to get that inspiration and insight into somebody else's work is just, it's always amazing. Not only do you guys do the, you have the first Friday, we also have other special events that you work on throughout the year. What do you have coming up next? The next thing we have coming up is our photo contest, and we'll be taking submissions for that from July 23rd to August 1st. And then we have on August 5th from 4 to 7, we'll have our big awards ceremony with refreshments and stuff, uh, just like our first Friday. And what kind of categories do you have? I bet you there's, you've probably got maybe someone that's youthful, like a... a, Yeah, we have a youth photography. We are... 
and they're amazing. The photos that they bring in are just so cool. Mm -hmm. uh, we have landscape, we have animals, we have black and white, uh, we have altered images, which is, you know, computer produced from original images. And oh, very cool. Yeah, it's really neat. And you display those at the gallery? Yes, mm -hmm. they're displayed the whole month of August. And the event is open to the public when you display and, and vote on who wins? How, oh, yeah. how does that work? Yeah, okay. it's a whole community event. People oh, bring yeah. their photos in and submit. We have a $100 grand prize for the best of show. So it's kind of fun. I'm just kind of curious because everyone is now a photographer because of their phones and the quality of the cameras that are in our phones. Have you? Do you know if you've had any winning submissions that have come via phone oh absolutely isn't that amazing greg it's totally you know you see the apple commercials talking about right. the phones and this and that we say phones they're not even phones i mean that's like the last thing we use these things for anymore the cameras on iphones and i'm sure the others are the same pretty amazing yeah they take some really good images yeah very cool so first Friday, go back to that uh, real quick. First Friday is an evening. So you, you're you trying to encourage people to come downtown, to come into the shops. There's a little wine, maybe some desserts, maybe go into people's shops and visit downtown, right? We're trying to re-energize that. And you guys are taking the lead on that. So appreciate that. Yeah, we'd really like to get all the downtown businesses involved in first Friday and, you know, maybe come up with some bingo games or treasure hunts or, you know, mm -hmm. Some fun and stuff, things like yeah. that, just to make it fun. And the American Legion is doing bingos on the first Friday every month. So we've got, okay, so we've got you guys kitty, kitty quartered there at Green and Tehachapi Boulevard and on F Street at Robinson. So now we need to get a little cross section going up Green, mm -hmm. across F, and get some more involved down to Hatchby Boulevard. Yeah, so, it's a really great um, advertising opportunity for all of the businesses downtown. Get mm -hmm. everybody involved, you know, the restaurants and the shops and everything. Park once and just enjoy yourself a, a Friday night at least once a month out here. Now, if there's other businesses that are kind of curious about what maybe they could do, can they reach out to you? Absolutely, they can reach out to me. And how can they get a hold of you? My email is gale, G-A-L-E, 67 at gmail.com. And I bet you they could probably even stop by Gallery and Gifts, leave their contact information, and you can get a hold of them that way also? Definitely. Okay, good. And then Chalk on the Walk. Every year, Chalk on the Walk prior to Mountain Festival. Let's talk about that for a minute. Chalk on the Walk is our baby. It's our just most favorite event that we do. We bring the community out. They draw pictures on the sidewalk. It's so much fun. All ages, all talent levels. We have prizes. We have a lot of sponsors from the community. We're so excited about that because all of that money that we gather from that event goes directly to buying art supplies for the local schools. Chalk on the Walk actually is, I think, really cool. The artists are amazing. I could not do what they do. But the quality is so high. And it stays there for days or weeks sometimes. And when you're strolling through downtown, maybe first Friday or, or different things, you can see the artist's paintings, let's say, with chalk every time you walk walk on the sidewalk. It's quite amazing. It's a lot of fun. The, looking at the, the level of depth that some of these artists are able to put into this sidewalk art is, a, it is blows me away. You know, especially when they do something where it, you almost want to skip over it because you think that you're going to step into a puddle of water or whatever it is. It's like... How do they bring that to life? And they're just using chalks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's fun to watch the little the little kids too. They have so much fun being out there with everybody else. And it's just a great family community event. And people respect the art just like they respect our murals. You know, knock on wood, but um, people really enjoy looking and appreciating the art. It's art happy. is in so many ways, but in this case, it's simple chalk and it, it really comes alive. It's crazy. There's an opportunity for... If there's kids, if my grandson wanted, if we wanted to, you know, get a, a section of the sidewalk for him to participate, how do I do that? We have um, submission forms online on our website, www.galleryandgifts.com. Also have them over at the shop so you can pick those up. It's $15 to participate. And with that, you get a set of artists, professional chalks, a logo drawstring backpack, which is really cool. You provide the chalk. Yes. There's another little step beyond that I wasn't wasn't ready for. Key, I think you and Chris should enter this. Chris could actually, I believe, I think she could. Chris uh, is talented. My, she's very talented. My wife is very talented. Yeah. And uh, you know what? I, I think that I would be good to take out the chair, watch, keep the ice chest ready okay. for if they're ready to, mm -hmm. and then have our grandson help her out. Well, you know, it takes, a, it takes a village. <laughs> it so, does. Yeah. I, I play the support <laughs> role. 
<laughs> I, I am not. My my hands were not made for art. My that's for sure. my role is just to uh, appreciate the art. Yes, exactly <laughs> right. So, Gail, what else do we have coming up, or or? Is there any, what else do you want to highlight that we haven't talked about? We have our maker's market in August at Railroad Park. The uh, 30 handcraft vendors out there locally. And so that's the same weekend as Mountain Festival. So it's in Railroad Park downtown and it's all local artisans. And you can, if you've never been or seen or participate, just stroll through. I I can almost guarantee you, you're going to see something you're going to want to buy. Definitely. Well, we're really lucky because our community is very shop small shop handmade so that's a great support and we have a lot of people that visit to hatchapi whether it's july 4th or mountain festival or you know any weekend quite frankly they come up here and they'll stroll into your shop other shops there's an event going on they can stroll around because they want to get out of the heat we have nice blue skies we usually have a, a little breeze and we're very welcoming i agree since you have so many people that come in they might ask you questions about Tehachapi and things, and you're our second visitor center, if you will. Has there been an interesting contact, someone that's come in that goes, wow, I'll never forget that because they asked about this or they came from this exotic place that just was like, wow, I've always wanted to. Why do they come to Tehachapi and they're from Switzerland or mm. <laughs> something like that? Is is there anything that has passed through the, the, the door there at TVAA, the Gallery and Gifts? It's really hard to say because we get so many people from so many different places and countries. We always have people coming in. We get people from China and, like you said, Switzerland. We had a couple in from Australia. We always get people in from England and Scotland and kind of a melting pot. You know, Key, we're the perfect spot between Yosemite and Las Vegas. It seems like every tourist from Europe stops in Tehachapi in their little motor home. They just left Yosemite and they're on the way to Vegas and they stop in Tehachapi. Oh, that's interesting. To get gas, to eat, stroll about our downtown, to go to the depot, look at the loop. You know, it's part of that. They must be, you know, networking somewhere in their own country and looking and doing their own research, you know, Googling things. But we have a lot of foreigners that stop in our town. A good place to stop in between travels. Mm -hmm. And top of the hill, it's a little cooler. You know, and there's something to see, something to do here. I know when I talk to uh, the folks at the visitor center, they always tell about different countries that come in, and it's like it's nonstop. It is. That's pretty cool. Well, like you said, you're right across the street from the depot and the visitor center, so it makes total sense, especially with train enthusiasts from across the world. Do we at times ever have train inspired art that is on display? Yeah, sometimes. We have a lot of souvenirs too and some of our artists will get inspired and do a train painting or a painting of the depot or really neat photography. Use some spikes, you know, incorporate the train railroad spikes into their art. Yes. I know some time ago I bought, there was a a metal worker and he must have cut it out with a kind of a laser cutter, but there were several, you know, things that I bought as gifts that were made by one of your members and it was metal art cut. Monica's junk iron. Oh, okay. Well, no. <laughs> what are the hours and days for gallery and gifts? We're open daily, 10 to 5. Okay. And it's gallery in gifts. And then when I say in, it's N, the letter N, gallery N gifts.com. And the same on Facebook. Yes. And they can follow you and you keep people updated on your events. First Friday, Chalk on the Walk, the photo contest, all of those are posted to both social media as well yeah. as Facebook and Instagram. That's oh, and Instagram as well. Yeah, that's the best way to find out what's going on with us. Very good. So your hashtags that you're using, Maker's Market, is there anything else that people could follow along? Do you Is it TVAA? Do we have a hashtag TVAA or hashtag uh, Gallery and Gifts? We do a hashtag shop downtown Tatchby. Okay. And shop handmade tachby okay very good we'll start using those and paying attention to those those hashtags so that way we can help spread that word because we try and make sure we whenever i see whatever you're putting out that we share it to our group so that way we can get you guys exposed to we you know, definitely some new appreciate that thank you what are the dates again on the the photo contest is next yeah submissions july 23rd through august 1st with the first friday reception on august 5th from four to seven and that's our next first friday okay so very good and then following that chalk on the walk is august 13th and okay. then we have our maker's market august 20th and 21st so it's going to be a heavy busy summer for all the artists here in Tehachapi be that are tied in with TVAA, part of your 33 artists that are constantly on the move. Yes, I definitely appreciate all of our volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it means a lot to us. We we couldn't do the things in this community without, no without the volunteers. Mm-hmm. So we appreciate all of that. 
And if folks would like any more information, we invite you to go to gallerynngifts.com or on Facebook. And then if you're interested, if you're a business owner and you want to be tied into what's going on on First Fridays, Gail is available so you can pick her brain. Let's do some cross promotions. We need a couple of restaurants to get involved. We need some of the other, maybe the antique stores. And I can see this being park once. And then I spend the evening walking around downtown. Now, it seems like, you know, pre-COVID, we had different things going on. And now it's post-COVID, post, you know, in parentheses. Let's get on First Friday again. Let's make it like it used to be. Bring it back strong. Now, did did COVID change things a lot? Oh, definitely. Okay. Yeah, it just, it killed First Friday. Mm -hmm. And so we're still in that uphill swing, getting it going again. And then what's the the response been like since California kind of reopened and, and we're getting more activity is that are, were you seeing things pick up again oh definitely people are coming out to the craft fairs makers markets um in droves they're just ready to get out and ready to do things i'm sure you know the farmer's market is every time i go by it's it's really busy so yes. yeah people are liking to be out mm-hmm. Greg, anything? I think here? we're good. I appreciate you coming in, Gail. It's been a great conversation. Well, yeah, thanks learned, for having me. Learned a lot. I, I wasn't uh, wasn't ready for the social media aspect. You know, the thing that I'm always touching base, and that you guys rebranded, if you will, and and went out and did a little bit of research. That you know, going from craft fair to artisan to makers market makes sense because that's the way our society is is talking. And you guys grabbed onto that, and it's super popular. So let's support our local artists. These guys are not getting rich <laughs> with this. You know, let's support them. It, it means a lot. It, it's a healthy city. It's a healthy community when you have artists in your community. Definitely, and Tatchby is just an artist mecca. Mm-hmm. There's so many artists in Tatchby. And if you'd like to see some of the sample work of some 33 different artists, stop in at Gallery and Gifts, the corner of Tatchby Boulevard and Green Street. 33 artists make up all of the things that you'll find up inside that store. So and you said daily, 10 to five, 10 to five daily. So folks, we invite you to swing on by and, and support TVAA, Gallery and Gifts. Gail, thank you so much for stopping in. I appreciate you guys having us. Folks, if you've got a question for Gail, you can send it to us here at media at TehachapiCityHall.com. We'll get it to her so she can answer that question. If you have a show idea, a topic or event that we should be talking about, Send it to media at TehachapiCityHall.com. We appreciate your time, and we'll catch you again soon here on Tehachapod. Tehachapod is a conversation about Tehachapi designed for the people who live here or who would like to know more about this mountaintop community. If you have a question you would like answered, email media at TehachapiCityHall.com. We will try to answer it on a future episode of Tehachapod.